1 Chronicles chapter 6 The sons of Levi Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath Amram, Itza, Hebron, and Aziel The children of Amram Aaron, Moses, and Miriam The sons of Aaron Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar Eleazar was the father of Phineas. Phineas the father of Abishua, Abishua the father of Bacchae, Bacchae the father of Azai, Azai the father of Zerahiah, Zerahiah the father of Meraioth, Meraioth the father of Amariah, Amariah the father of Ahitab, Ahitab the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Ahimahaz, Ahimahaz the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Johanan, Johanan the father of Azariah. It was he who served as priest in the temple Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah, the father of Amariah, Amariah, the father of Ahitab, Ahitab, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Shalom, Shalom, the father of Hilkiah, Hilkiah, the father of Azariah, Azariah, the father of Siriah, and Siriah, the father of Jozadek. Jozadek was deported when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimei. The sons of Kohath Amram, Itza, Hebron, and Aziel. The sons of Merari Malai and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites listed according to their fathers. Of Gershon, Libni his son, Jehath his son, Zimah his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, and Jeatharai his son. The descendants of Kohath, Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Asa his son, Elkanah his son, Abiasaph his son, Asa his son, Tehath his son, Uriel his son, Aziah his son, and Sheol his son. The descendants of Elkanah, Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkanah his son, Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Elihath his son, Jeroham his son, Elkanah his son, and Samuel his son. The sons of Samuel Joel, the firstborn, and Abijah, the second son. The descendants of Merari, Malai, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Azza, his son, Shimea, his son, Haggaiah, his son, and Asaiah, his son. These are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They performed their duties according to the regulations laid down for them. Here are the men who served, together with their sons. From the Kohathites, Heman, the musician, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zoth, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Asa, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Itza, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And Heman's associate Asaph, who served at his right hand. Asaph, son of Berechiah, the son of Shimeah, the son of Michael, the son of Baasiah, the son of Malchiah, the son of Ethnai, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zimah, the son of Shimei, the son of Jehath, the son of Gershon, the son of Levi. And from their associates, the Merarites at his left hand, Ethan, son of Kishai, the son of Abdai, the son of Maloch, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Benai, 
the son of Shema, the son of Malai, the son of Mushai, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their fellow Levites were assigned to all the other duties of the tabernacle, the house of God. But Aaron and his descendants were the ones who presented offerings on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense in connection with all that was done in the most holy place, making atonement for Israel, in accordance with all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These were the descendants of Aaron. Eleazar, his son. Phinehas, his son. Abishua, his son. Bacchae, his son. Azai, his son. Zerahiah, his son. Marioth, his son. Amariah, his son. Ahitub, his son. Zadok, his son. And Ahimahaz, his son. These were the locations of their settlements allotted as their territory. They were assigned to the descendants of Aaron who were from the Kohathite clan, because the first lot was for them. They were given Hebron in Judah with its surrounding pasture lands, but the fields and villages around the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given Hebron, a city of refuge, and Libna, Yatta, Eshtomoa, Hylen, Debir, Ashan, Jatta, and Beth Shemesh, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Benjamin they were given Gibeon, Jeba, Alameth, and Anathoth, together with their pasture lands. The total number of towns distributed among the Kohathite clans came to thirteen. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted ten towns from the clans of half the tribe of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon, clan by clan, were allotted thirteen towns from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and from the part of the tribe of Manasseh that is in Bashan. The descendants of Merari, clan by clan, were allotted twelve towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites gave the Levites these towns and their pasture lands. From the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, they allotted the previously named towns. Some of the Kohathite clans were given as their territory towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country of Ephraim, they were given Shechem, a city of refuge, and Giza, Jokmian, Bethhoron, Ajalon, and Gathrimon, together with their pasture lands. And from half the tribe of Manasseh, the Israelites gave Ana and Biliam, together with their pasture lands, to the rest of the Kohathite clans. The Gershonites received the following. From the clan of the half-tribe of Manasseh, they received Golan in Bashan and also Ashtaroth, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Issachar, they received Kedesh, Dabara, Ramoth, and Anem, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Asher, they received Meshal, Abdon, Yukok, and Rehob, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Naphtali, they received Kedesh in Galilee, Hamon, and Kiriathaim, together with their pasture lands. The Merarites, the rest of the Levites, received the following. From the tribe of Zebulun, they received Jokneum, Carta, Ramono, and Tabor, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Reuben across the Jordan, east of Jericho, they received Beza in the wilderness, Jaza, Kedamoth, and Mepheah, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Gad, they received Ramoth and Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, together with their pasture lands. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 7 The Sons of Issachar Tola, Pua, Jeshub, and Shimron, four in all. The Sons of Tola, Azai, Lephiah, Jeriel, Jamei, Ibsam, and Samuel, heads of their families. During the reign of David, the descendants of Tola listed as fighting men in their genealogy numbered 22,600. The son of Azai, Israhiah. The sons of Israhiah, Michal, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah. All five of them were chiefs. According to their family genealogy, they had 36,000 men ready for battle, 
for they had many wives and children. The relatives who were fighting men belonging to all the clans of Issachar, as listed in their genealogy, were 87,000 in all. Three sons of Benjamin, Bela, Bika, and Jediel. The sons of Bela, Esbon, Azai, Aziel, Jeremoth, and Irai, heads of families, five in all. Their genealogical record listed 22,034 fighting men. The sons of Bika, Zemira, Joash, Eliza, Elioenai, Omri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Elameth. All these were the sons of Bika. Their genealogical record listed the heads of families and 20,200 fighting men. The son of Jediel, Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan, Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kenayana, Zithan, Tarshish, and Ahishaiah. All these sons of Jediel were heads of families. There were 17,200 fighting men ready to go out to war. The Shapites and Hapites were the descendants of Ur, and the Hushites the descendants of Aher. The sons of Naphtali Yaziel, Gunai, Jeza, and Shilem, the descendants of Bilha. The descendants of Manasseh, Azriel, was his descendant through his Aramean concubine. She gave birth to Maker, the father of Gilead. Maker took a wife from among the Hapites and Shapites. His sister's name was Maaka. Another descendant was named Zolophahad, who had only daughters. Makia's wife Maaka gave birth to a son and named him Piresh. His brother was named Shiresh, and his sons were Ulam and Rechem. The son of Ulam, Bidan. These were the sons of Gilead, son of Makia, the son of Manasseh. His sister Hamolegeth gave birth to Ishod, Apaiza, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahayan, Shechem, Likai, and Anayam. The descendants of Ephraim Shuthila, Bered, his son, Tehath, his son, Eliada, his son, Tehath, his son, Zebad, his son, and Shuthila, his son. Isa and Eliad were killed by the native born men of Gath when they went down to seize their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned for them many days, and his relatives came to comfort him. Then he made love to his wife again, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. He named him Bariah, because there had been misfortune in his family. His daughter was Shirah, who built lower and upper Beth Horan, as well as Azan Shirah. Repha was his son, Reshef his son, Tila his son, Tehan his son. Ladan his son, Amihud his son, Elishama his son, Nun his son, and Joshua his son. Their lands and settlements included Bethel and its surrounding villages, Neoran to the east, Giza and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its villages, all the way to Eya and its villages. Along the borders of Manasseh were Bethshan, Teanach, Megiddo, and Dor, together with their villages. The descendants of Joseph, son of Israel, lived in these towns. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Bariah. Their sister was Sira. The sons of Bariah, Heba and Malkiel, who was the father of Bazaith. Heba was the father of Japhlet, Shoma, and Hotham, and their sister Shua. The sons of Japhlet, Pesach, Bimhal, and Ashva. These were Japhlet's sons. The sons of Shoma, Ahai, Rogar, Haba, and Aram. The sons of his brother Helam, Zophar, Imna, Shilesh, and Amal. The sons of Zophar, Sua, Hanafe, Shual, Birai, Imra, Biza, Hod, Shama, Shilsha, Ethran, and Beira. The sons of Jetha, Jephune, Pispa, and Era. The sons of Allah, Era, Haniel, and Ritzia. 
All these were descendants of Asia, heads of families, choice men, brave warriors, and outstanding leaders. The number of men ready for battle as listed in their genealogy was 26,000. 1 Chronicles chapter 8 Benjamin was the father of Bela, his firstborn, Ashbel, the second son, Ahara, the third, Nohar, the fourth, and Repha, the fifth. The sons of Bela were Ada, Jira, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Jira, Shephufan, and Huram. These were the descendants of Ehud, who were heads of families of those living in Jeba and were deported to Manahath. Naaman, Ahijah, and Jira, who deported them, and who was the father of Uzzah and Ahihud. Sons were born to Shehoraim in Moab after he had divorced his wives, Hushim and Bera. By his wife Hodesh, he had Jobab, Zibia, Misha, Malcam, Jeoz, Sakiah, and Murma. These were his sons, heads of families. By Hushim, he had Abitab and Elpeal. The sons of Elpeal, Eba, Misham, Shemed, who built Ono and Lod with its surrounding villages, and Bariah and Shema, who were heads of families of those living in Ajalon, and who drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Ahio, Sheshak, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arad, Ida, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were the sons of Bariah. Zebediah, Meshalem, Hizkai, Heba, Ishmarai, Isliah, and Jobab were the sons of Elpeal. Jakim, Zikrai, Zabdai, Elienai, Zilathai, Eliel, Ediah, Bariah, and Shimra were the sons of Shimei. Ishpan, Eba, Eliel, Abdon, Zikrai, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Anthothijah, Iftiah, and Penuel were the sons of Sheshak. Shamsharai, Shehariah, Ataliah, Jarashiah, Elijah and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham. All these were heads of families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Jedor, Ahio, Zika, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shimea. They too lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Meribbaal, who was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the father of Alamath, as Maveth and Zimri, and Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia, Repha was his son, Eliasa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names. Azraikam, Bokoru, Ishmael, Shiraiah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel. The sons of his brother, Eshek, Ulam his firstborn, Jeush the second son, and Eliphalet the third. The sons of Ulam were brave warriors who could handle the bow. They had many sons and grandsons, a hundred and fifty in all. All these were the descendants of Benjamin. Acts chapter 8 And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. 
When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns 
until he reached Caesarea. Psalm 136 Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures for ever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures for ever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures for ever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures for ever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures for ever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures for ever. Who made the great lights. His love endures for ever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures for ever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures for ever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. His love endures for ever. And brought Israel out from among them. His love endures for ever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm. His love endures for ever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, His love endures for ever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, His love endures for ever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, His love endures for ever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, His love endures for ever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures for ever, and killed mighty kings. His love endures for ever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures for ever, and Og, king of Bashan, his love endures for ever, and gave their land as an inheritance. His love endures for ever, an inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures for ever. He remembered us in our lower state, His love endures for ever, and freed us from our enemies, His love endures for ever. He gives food to every creature, His love endures for ever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, His love endures for ever. Proverbs chapter 12 Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Good people obtain favor from the Lord, but he condemns those who devise wicked schemes. No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. The wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers, but the root of the righteous endures. Evildoers are trapped by their sinful talk, and so the innocent escape trouble. From the fruit of their lips people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, 
but those who promote peace have joy. No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. In the way of righteousness there is life. Along that path is immortality. <laughs>